Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another installment on my channel. Today we're going to be setting up the FSI 6X which is primarily a 6 channel radio but you can open it up to 10 channels. I'm not going to go through how to set it up with 10 channels because we only have a 6 channel receiver. And in this truck this has got an MFC-03, which is the Euro spec. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, that's an American truck. You should have an MFC-01. I wanted the MFC-03 in that because of its little bit of extra uh, functions um, that I wanted. So, I'm going to show you how to install this, how to identify the channels and how to calibrate this with the MFC-03 and I'm going to start it from uh, beginning to end. So, without further, this is a budget radio. These are around £50 off um, Amazon or eBay. Um, they don't come with a spring kit. I have done a video, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video and into the description of uh, that video. So this stick is spring loaded, so it self centers. I'm going to use um, some Powerland Fusion Max batteries just to keep in with the budget because some people are on a tight budget, especially if they've just shelled out a lot of money for the Tamiya multifunction control unit and um yeah so budget radio uh 50 pounds for the radio and about five pounds for the spring um so yeah let's uh let's get into it and we're going to show you how to set up the um, dual rates, how to open the switches up to be able to operate as um, you would want it to. These are channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 and these two are currently default at 5 and 6 which are um, variable um, potentiometers. These switches uh, I would say primarily for aeroplanes, but the good thing is this one's got a three position switch just here. And I'm going to use this to uh, operate the transmission. This one I'm going to set up as just an on off switch if you wanted to use a receiver controlled switch. Um, and this switch here I'm going to use as a dual rate. Now the dual rate is quite simply um, an electronic feature that just stops you from um, using the trims because these are just click trims they're not zip trims like on a, an old analog radio so what this will do is obviously if you hold that up it goes up to 100 but if you extend this all the way up it goes up to 110 120 whatever range the radio trims go up to um, so all I'm going to do is alter the value so this is going to stay at 75% of its travel but when switched it will go up to 100% of its travel that's what it's um, that is what is meant by dual rate so without further let's get this all programmed in before we even start looking at plugging in this because we need to identify what channel does what channel identification I'm going to uh, just bring a notepad in and lift you guys up until you down because this bit is important. Comes up with a warning straight away saying that the throttle is not in its down position. Just tap that stick down 
and uh, we're good to go. Now, here's the thing. First of all, we're going to identify these channels and we will name this Fly Sky FS I6X and MFC03. And we will do um, a channel identifying. So we press and hold the OK button to get into the menu. And that's that one. So we press up to go across to the functions in setup. And then we go down to display, press OK, and then we can see the display. Throttle is channel three. So we're going to put throt equals channel three. And the left to right is channel four. That is going to be gears. Gears equals channel four. That is left stick. And then on this side, steering is going to be on channel one. And this is um, right stick and up and down is going to be lights equals channel two. So that's basically it. So throttle gears, steering and lights, left stick, right stick, these are important. So also on this, I know that throttle is J5, steering is J4, gears is J7 and lights is J6, so J4, 5, 6 and 7. Sounds really weird, but that's that's okay. So we can see here that these two variable potentiometers operates channels five and six. We don't want them on there because I want gears, which doesn't do anything to these. These switches are not switched on. So I'm going to um, move that to one side. Obviously, the receiver doesn't come into play yet. So, back to the main menu by pressing the cancel button. So we press and hold OK to go into the menu. We're going to stay on system setup. Press that. You can go into model select. Um, which I don't know how many, how many, 20 models you can have on this. So model name, you can alter the name of the model, but I'm not going to uh, waste your time doing that. You just, you know, scroll across, make your own word up um, type select. Model 1, FlySky 01, Airplane or Glider, right? So we need to go on Airplane or Glider. We go down to, right down to the bottom in System, and we go into Ox Switches. Now you can see that these switches... SWA, B, C, and D are off. 
and the variable potentiometers which are these are set to on and we are only on six channels so simply press up to turn switch a on press ok to go across and up to turn that on press ok again and that is switch a b and c on i'm going to leave switch d off because i'm not going to be using that and i'm going to switch vra off and vrb off and then i'm going to leave it on six channels we can increase that to 10 but i'm going to leave it on six so now we've got switch a b c on and then d vra vrb off we press and hold this cancel button until we hear a bleep to, to set in those um, switches that's it and then from system we go up to function setup we're going to press ok and we're going to then scroll down to display and we can see that these switches are still having no effect neither are the variable resist uh, resi what they called potentiometers so we need to cancel out of that and go down to aux channels and then from aux channels we can see that channel 5 and channel 6 don't have a source okay so we simply press down until we get i want channel 5 to be on switch b remember we've opened switch a b and c so it's only going to be those switches that are available so this one i want is channel 5 on switch b press ok and then scroll down until i get to switch c which is the three position and then i press and hold the cancel button and those are now in and if i go back up to display i can now see that channel 5 moves and this one controls channel 6 which is going to be the three speed transmission so that's all good and then when we can see that these two switches are working this one obviously isn't assigned so we go down to assign switches and then we press OK and this fly mode says none. So we need that to go to switch C sport mode. We can do switch A, B or C, but we want it to be in switch A, right, into normal. So when we flick this switch, it goes into sport mode. OK. To cut to set that in press and hold cancel and that sets in that setting then we go to jewelry and expo press ok and we can see that normal channel one we know that channel one is the steering we don't need to dual rate that so just we just need to do channel two and channel four so just by pressing up moves that to channel two pressing ok moves that down arrow down to the right and we just scroll that back to 75 okay so when we move this switch it goes to 100 and 75 between sport 100 normal 75 so that's good for that so we press the ok button until we get to channel two we press up to channel four press ok go down to rates reduce that down to 75 okay so again in normal 75 sport 100 simple to set those in press and hold cancel and they are in so let's go back up to display and we'll see what they have done so it's this channel 2 here 
and this channel four here. So it's channel two and four that you're gonna be looking at. So when I switch that, it jumps up to 100%. And that is good to go. And we can get out of that, get out of that, and get out of that. There is no line here to say that there is a receiver uh, connected because that's still here. And what we need to do is to make sure that everything is good to go. So just to write this down, we are doing SWA is going to be our dual rate um, SWB is going to be our on off and SWC is going to be our three position for gears that's as simple as that that's all we need to know. Um, so right, I'm going to get this in the truck and plug it all in. Right then, the screws are out holding the sleeper cab on. On the King Hauler, the cab comes all as one piece. And um, I find it really awkward to work on this with them two um still in one piece the cab is fitted on with two screws and the sleepers fitted on with another two screws on each side so you can't tell that that is um, split so let's get this receiver fitted yeah very neat wiring in there I hate untidy wiring and then we just lift off this I'm going to put that down there because I've got a small speaker from an LCD TV up there. I'll just put that actually. Just there for now. Precariously balanced. Zoom in on the patch leads. So let me just remove that um, fake wall and speaker all together because I don't want to be pulling and prodding about. So that's my wiring. Looks all pretty messy, but I do wrap it as far as uh, as far as I can. So. Bringing in the notepad that we've um, already written out. Um, that bleep was the radio telling me that nothing's been done. So I'll turn that off. So, throttle on these leads just here tells you that J4 is steering, J5 is throttle, J6 is input and support legs which is your lights and input and shift right so we need to put channel um, 3 is throttle which is J5 so I'm going to plug that into channel 3. With the white signal wire towards the top of the receiver. Gears. J7. Is channel 4. That is my left stick. And then J6 is going into channel 2. 
And then the last one, J4, which is um, the uh, steering. Just have to check that there. Just always check. And then that is the order that they must be in. J4, 6, 5 and 7 from channels 1, 2, 3 and 4. That is important. Even if you're not fitting the um, servo for the fifth wheel coupling, you still need to plug all four of these in. Now, the shift servo, I'm not having it on the um, left stick function left to right because that's going to be dual rated. Don't want that on there. So I'm going to get the shift servo, which is this one here. I've, made, I've put a sticker on it saying J10, which is output for the shift. And I'm going to plug that into channel six because that is the channel that I've assigned the three-way um, switch on here which is this one so quite simply I'm using channel 6 for my shift server simple all the white signal wires are at the top all the black wires are at the bottom and uh, yeah, that's that. Now we need to bind because we need to assume that these don't come pre-bound. So we get the supplied bind plug, which is just a loop. And um, on the top one here, just above channel six is a B. B for bind. So I'm just going to plug that in so it's just a loop in there. So when I power the truck up, this will go straight into bind mode and then we can bind the radio. So we've got a choice of what we run in these trucks, batteries. Tammy would say you can't use a lipo. A lot of people say you can't use lipo. We can use. Um, Anything, um, nickel metal hydride, six stick, um, 7.2 volt um, battery. Or I like to use um, lipo bags, shorty packs, or a full sized um, lipo. This is 5 200 milliamp power, 7.4 volt, 30C. That is more than enough for these trucks. But what you'll find is these are really tight fit to go in there. In fact, it's a very snug fit. I don't use battery bars on this. Let me just lift you up. I don't use um, the battery retaining straps because I don't go off road. Um, but they are a snug, snug fit. Um, but I use these for 600s. These are absolutely brilliant. Um, they're only... What do you say? That is two thirds. Two thirds of the size. And they just drop in there. Fantastic. Let me get the leads. Right, let's get rid of them over there. And let's just plug this into here. Right, negative, positive. So negative in there. The little one goes in the middle for a balance. And that goes in there like that. Brilliant. Now, the Tamiya multifunction unit does not have a low battery warning. So... I plug in a little battery monitor 
into the balance lead which goes in that way and then that tells me that when these batteries get down to um, 7.6 this will start bleeping and that will um, mean I need to take that out and then connect up the battery now we need to bind this to the radio so we're going to go over this way as soon as we turn on the rig we will see this button flash let me uh, move down to there so how to get this into bind mode bind plug in back wheels off the floor because we don't want it flying off the table or anything like that and um, turn the unit on and we can see this is going into bind mode so from that in uh, bind mode you can see that the light is flashing away just here and then what we do is we press and hold the bind key and turn on the radio and immediately that binds there is no noise because the speaker is in here so for the purposes of the demonstration I'm going to power this off always the model first then the radio put that over there so now that's all bind together remove the bind plug because if you don't as soon as you turn on the truck it will go back into bind mode so leave that out once it's all done um so now we need to learn how to train the uh, radio with um, the multifunction unit which is uh, pretty simple first thing we need to do is to turn on the radio tap the stick down because it's in a throttle uh, hype um, mode let me just reposition the camera right now we've got this bind remove the bind plug because if you don't every time you switch on the model this will go into bind mode and that's not going to be uh, what we want so before we turn this on the light does time out on that until you move a switch so I'm going to press this round button if I can find it just there and then turn the model on that bleep was that it's received a signal and this light here is flashing and after about 10 seconds that is factory reset if you press and hold that button turn the unit on it goes to factory reset so if you um, screw things up just do a factory reset and um, then we need to go into calibration mode so first of all we need to make sure that this switch is in its um, up position and then we press and hold that button for about a second and a half two seconds the indicators will flash and this is flashing two times and off two times and off so that is now in calibration mode when I move these sticks 
I go up, down, right, left, up, down, right, left. This LED then starts to flash steady. And then all I do is press that button. And that is calibrated. So the MFC03 doesn't start the engine as the MFC01 does. We have to start the engine on this. So we pull this stick down. Doesn't start. But if we pull it down all the way, it does start. So let me get the sleeper cab back on that and I'll show you what happens with all this. Now it's all calibrated. Okay, we're all together. It's all closed off. And um, always turn on your radio first. Make sure that's in the down position. Make sure your rear wheels are off the floor because if the signal's lost then that's going to go off the table not going to be a good day select switch over here on the mfc is going to be in the middle position that gives us all functions and then we turn this on Now we can hear that that has um, connected. We can hear that's gone into its bleeps as, uh, as though we've turned the ignition on because we have. The engine isn't running because on the O3 you have a engine starting feature. Now we have cold cranking. Just pull down on the left stick, sorry, the right stick, slightly, and you get the cold crank. If you just pull it all the way down, the engine starts. And uh, I've taken this speaker out because I don't want that one in, because I've got the, the one that I've originally put in there. So, now, if I move the stick up slightly, I get flashing headlights. And if I push all the way up, I go air horn, which is a better air horn than the O1 in my opinion. So, if I go up slightly, I get flashing lights and then yeah brilliant that's one of the features I wanted which the O3 the O1 doesn't have but the O3 does doesn't really sound bad even though it's an American American truck um, and then we have the steering which The indicators don't work just yet because what you have to do is you have to pull down and you see how the steering wheels are going the wrong way. That's an easy fix. We just reverse that channel and we swap out these plugs inside. There is a more complicated way of doing it which is an absolute pain in the behind so we're not going to do that staying on with this I'm going to pull that dual rate switch down and then we can have the lights stage one stage two stage three that ramps up because they are LED drivers these are three volt LEDs they don't have resistors and that's that and if you click that down sharp tap up you get the four-way hazard warning lights. I 
and that is this stick. So light, one, two, three. That's that. And the, um, let's have a look at the rear. So we've got um, lights, dual ray on, tail lights, and then we have brake lights, reversing lights. I put twin reversing lights on these. Um, modern twist to an old truck. And uh, I swapped out the orange LEDs for a more American looking red. So that's uh, it's all pretty good. Now we have forward. And because we have this switch, this is the transmission. So yeah, that's pretty good. The noise you can hear is, I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn the lights off. No, I don't think you can see that. I can see it, but I don't think you can on the, um, can you see the fan? Yeah, just a crazy idea that I had once, and I just thought, yeah, well, whatever. Um, right, sub functions. If I have the dual rate switch on, and I tap this that way, you see the indicators are silently flashing. This then opens up the fifth wheel function that uncouples my fifth wheel that also operates the um, legs the uh, electric trailer legs and to get out of that we just tap that across the indicators flash silent once uh, to say that we're out of that also we have air horn and in Europe some trucks have the option of a town horn so dual rate tap that to the left and we have a town horn so here we have forward and reverse reverse and forward well it's forward brake and then reverse and this is the gears which we're not using because we have them up here doesn't have any any difference on there and that's um that's it to shut the truck down from the remote is very similar to the O1 on this one dual rate Hold to the um, hold this to the right and tap this stick down. That is the lights on alarm. So to stop that, we just turn the lights off and nothing works now apart from the nothing on the motor so it can't run away but the lights do you can turn the lights on right now we're going to get into um how to set um end points on your steering so i'm going to flip this truck up onto its nose 
and we're going to get up close and personal with the steering so just give me two seconds and i will be right back and here we go with endpoint adjustment um the model is switched on the engine isn't running so the throttle input is going to have no um input whatsoever um so as you can see that i'm not moving the stick all the way and you can see let me just zoom me zoom down a little bit on what that um is actually doing and as you can see no servo savers right that is in there so if i bring this stick in you can see that when i steer that wheel is just nearly touching the spring um that's the steering modification that i've done with the offset um, rod ends and small modification to the shock absorber lower mount so it gives us that little bit more this side if you look at that servo saver just here wants to push further so we need to set that so it doesn't over push and this is how we do that basically press ok to go into the menu we go into setup so press ok to go or up to go across press ok and then we go down to end points and then channel one is the steering so what I want to do is to reduce that end point down to about 80 and then hold this stick across so it goes over to 100 and then I'm going to wind that back down to about 80 again. So the, the, the steering is now only going to be 80%. Still too much that way. So I'm going to reduce that down to 70 and see how right if you, if you hold the stick you can actually see the steering move and that is just just right and then this way I can go up until So now that's it so i'm at 103 and 64 so i just press and hold cancel to keep those settings and that is that now we have to then do another retrain for the mfc because there's new endpoints on the steering it's a pain in the behind but this is what we've got to do or we're just going to strip out this servo but before we do that we're going to set the endpoints for the transmission as well i'll go up a little bit and zoom out so we can actually see this part the gear uh, selector shaft is in the middle here and this switch here when it's down is in third you can hear it buzzing because it might be over pushing so when that's in the middle this should be equal distance this rod should be equal distance between the two that is equal distance so i'm going to go back into the menu to set the endpoints so press and hold ok over to function setup down to endpoints 
So now I'm going to set the gear endpoints. Right, this is not going to need retraining for this. So um, something's just fallen off. Oh, the visor's just fallen off. Um, so we know that the gear servo is on switch C, which is channel six. So we're just going to press OK until we get down to channel six. And then we need to reduce that value. And then reduce that value. Just, just until it stops. And then on the upward one, let me just start the truck. Because the gears need to be running. Let me just turn the volume down, because it's on this side. So if I throttle up now, see this here, it's not quite settled in, so I'm going to increase that. Until that circlet, the e clip, is pulled in and the servo isn't straining. That's new, that's the second gear, the third gear, and these are now. Let's uh, line that back down to 86 and 81 that's what it's taken to set the endpoints on this so the gears now are set and that if it gets in between gears it makes a horrible rattling sound and it's because it's, it's not quite engaging to set these in press and hold cancel and they are in and that it's good to go. Now, because we've reduced the endpoints on the steering, we're going to have to go and retrain. So let me do that. So we're back on the um, right side up. Just, of, uh, just disconnect the speaker. And plug in a stock speaker. So whilst it is still running, all I'm going to do, I haven't changed those indicators because I'm going to do something slightly different with this. So I'm going to press and hold that button. And this light here is going into that um, flashing pattern. This one just here. And then on the radio, I'm going to go up, down, left, right, and then right stick up, down, left, and right. And that light here has now confirmed by a steady pattern that we're good to go. So just find that button. That buzzing noise is the vibration motor and the fan. Um, people find them annoying. I don't know, I might disconnect it. But, um, if it uh, starts getting on my nerves. And um, now the steering. The steering is different on here. So, 
to correct that, now the lights are actually connecting, uh, steering left, left indicator, etc. I'm going to have to uh, just go into setup, reverse, and steering is on channel one. So I'm just going to press up to reverse it. Press and hold to keep that setting. And now you turn left and right, it's the right way around. And it's not overstretching the steering. So that, my friends, um, is as complicated as it gets. I might not have been clear about something. Um, so comments, leave a comment and I'll try and uh, explain myself. Because in my head, I'm saying one thing, but what's coming out of my mouth is uh, something completely different. So um, let me stick all this back together and uh, LCD TV speaker takes up a hell of a lot less room and if you can hear the sound of that another feature is you've got a clutch on there so if you pull this stick down you can just rev the engine that buzzing noise is that annoying that annoying uh, vibration motor with the fan on it I will at one point disconnect that so I'm going to stick this back together and um, right then uh, boys and girls something has just occurred to me and I don't know why I've not thought of it in the past and that is quite simply set your endpoints on your steering before you do your calibration and then you don't have to do the endpoints on your steering and then go back and recalibrate because the steering is not dual rated it's only the lights and the fifth wheel so yeah that's something to uh, to think about so calibrate your endpoints on your steering first then do your mfc training on this and then we're good to go yeah just a thought um any comments leave them below i do read them and i do try and respond to all of them and if you've got any ideas any suggestions we're happy to hear them um in the meantime have fun folks and enjoy your hobby.